If you're using Ableton Live on stage, then it's essential that you have a great audio interface. And not just a great audio interface, but an audio interface that is great for live performance. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the five best audio interfaces for live performance in 2022. So let's get started. Hey everybody, this is Will. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I want to mention up front, if you're interested in all my gear suggestions that are best for you as a performer live on stage, whether you are an artist, a band, leading worship, whatever it is, then head to from studiostage.com slash gear. You can download my brand new and updated gear guide where I walk you through what I think is all the best gear that you need that's going to last, that's going to work very, very well. Now, when we're talking about an audio interface that, again, that's not just great, but is great for live performance, what does that entail? Well, the first First thing is inputs and preamps do not matter. Now it's great to have them. And obviously it's great to buy an interface that's still purpose that I can record with as well too. Um, but we don't need it when we're on stage. I remember working with an artist once and they were bragging about this great rig that they got. They bought like $2,000 uh, interfaces and the preamps are really good. And I thought, but you're running tracks with them. You're not processing vocals live. You're not doing auto tune live. Uh, they weren't even using it to record in the studio. They were just using it live. So they basically threw away about $1,500 uh, that they could have used for an audio interface. The second thing to me that is an absolute must, I will make an asterisk here that one of the interfaces I'm about to show you does not have this, but MIDI connectivity is essential. Uh, the ability to use MIDI controllers on stage allows us to not look like we're checking our email on stage. And so a audio interface that's built for live performance needs to have some MIDI capability with the exception of one of these I'm about to show you. Um, so let's get to it. We're looking at something that has high track count, audio uh, inputs do not matter, uh, and we're looking for MIDI capability. So I wanna start at the top, and I'm gonna give you my odd man out. This is the one that does not have MIDI capability, but it's still great. This is the Xbox.md by Direct Out Technologies. Um, this interface is the best interface if you are using Dante. And if you're using Dante, you're going, but Will, why would I buy an interface? I have Dante Virtual Sound Card. Well, the thing that makes the Xbox.md so important is it allows you to create a redundant audio tracks rig. So what you can have is two separate computers. Uh, if you look at the back of the Xbox.md, you're gonna see uh, four different inputs. So you can do a redundant Dante network, but you're gonna both have computer A and computer B. So on that primary port and that secondary port. And what's really cool about this is you can run both of those tracks computers going at the same time. And if this computer goes down, then you can switch to that other computer. So you can get up to 32 outputs out of both machines over Dante. And this computer kind of sits as an input between box there. It's uh, the best solution if you're using Dante. It doesn't have MIDI capabilities like I mentioned uh, to you know accept MIDI because there's no inputs and outputs because it's just Ethernet based. Uh, you can control it and switch it via MIDI controller. So there's bonus points for that. Um, it's it's uh, the most expensive interface of all the interfaces I'm showing you. But if you are using Dante, if you're in an installed setup or uh, a traveling uh, setup where you're using Dante, the Xbox MD is the solution for you. So that's number five. Number four is the Persona Studio 1824C. USB-C audio interface. Here's the main thing I love about this. Let me show you on the back. Look at all these glorious outputs. So we get eight uh, TRS outputs on the back of this. Um, now, I did say inputs don't matter, but bonus points to Personas for a lot of fancy stuff on here. So we do get those eight outputs, which I like. It is rack mountable, so you show you the front here, and I think yeah, you could see the rack panels there. So that's also a plus uh, for me as well, too. Um, you do get all the great preamps that uh, Personas is known for, a lot of really cool functionality. And you can just scroll down uh, a product page for this and see all the different things that are included. Included. Uh, you get Studio One included. You get uh, wireless control um, that you can access the interface and change a lot of things. So this is a really great interface if you're looking for both a great studio interface and a great interface for live performance. Uh, again, we do get MIDI. We get the five pin MIDI in and out, which is great. Uh, and it's pretty affordable for, um, I think eight inputs is what we get. Yeah, we get eight audio inputs. Again, I know I said inputs don't matter, but bonus points to personas for including them. Uh, but we get eight inputs included here. Uh, eight outputs. Uh, it's going to sit in your studio really well. You can uh, send clock to it. There's eight at spit if um, a lot of really great stuff and it's pretty affordable. So if you're looking for a really great uh, live performance interface and a great studio uh, interface, then that is a great solution. Number three 
on the list is the track rig by loop community now loop community is known if you're a worship leader you know loop community they're known for creating tracks for creating loop to miss uh and the track rig is is a pretty cool uh creation by them uh they wanted to create an interface that was just really simple uh eight outputs so on the front uh, uh or the back because you can uh, put rack ears on this and swap them either side you get eight xlr outputs which is great i really like that you just plug in the eight xlr outputs and you're good to go so they make that incredibly simple Simple. This is a good picture that kind of showcases that. Uh, on the back of the interface, let's see if we can find an image here uh, on the back of it. Uh, you basically have a USB port. So you can connect all your devices. gives you four additional USB ports to connect all your MIDI controllers, hard drives, or charge your phone. Um, that's something that I really like about the track rig because uh, it gives you that pass-through, the MIDI pass-through. Here's a better picture of it that you can see there. Um, you can connect your computer here. You get the four USB ports. Uh, technically, it's not MIDI, but you can use USB MIDI to pass through it. Um, what I do like about the hub is that, uh, again, anything can pass through it. It's not just a particular uh, USB port, but anything can pass through it. It's also pretty affordable. It's $4.99. The thing I don't like about this that you'll see here in a second is when I compare the price point of that to like the Personas interface that was $30 more, um, I get way more with that. When I compare this to our number one uh, ranking, uh, that's only a little bit more than this, uh, I feel like I get a lot more. So I think um, uh, bonus points on the track rig for just being real dead simple, right? Uh, bonus points are having this USB port. Um, but I take off a little bit because I feel like the price point is is, is high for the fact that I don't get redundancy, uh, I don't get five pin MIDI, I don't get audio inputs. I know I said that doesn't matter. But again, when you compare the price of that and a box that basically has no preamps in it, $4.99 feels a little high to me, but I still think it's a great interface for live performance, particularly if you're looking for something simple. Now, number two on the list, it's one of my favorites, the iConnectivity Audio 4C. Um, now, for full disclosure, I do do some work with iConnectivity from time to time, creating training content and videos for them. You can see, oh, where we go, there we go. Obviously, I have a lot of iConnectivity uh, devices and interfaces here in the office. But the reason I do is because I love what they do, and they have really unique, creative interfaces. So the Audio 4C. Uh, it meets our criteria in a lot of different ways. We have six different outputs. It looks like four here, but we actually have our phone's output that becomes five and six. We have a USB host port that allows us to connect up to eight USB devices. Now, unlike the track rig where I can plug a hard drive or anything up to it, um, I can't do that with the Audio 4C, but what I can do that I love is I can connect up to eight USB MIDI controllers that all have separate MIDI to and from from the Audio 4C, which is super, super great. Again, we get five pin MIDI, we get six outputs. We do get some audio inputs. Again, not a, not a necessity for live performance, but it's great to have them. The preamps sound great. Uh, they work really well. The price is really, really great, $3.99. Super, super affordable for that. Uh, and then what's great about this that's really unique about the Audio 4C is I get two USB-C ports. Now, I'm a huge fan of USB-C. For connectivity, it just makes it easy. Uh, and when the interface is USB-C built into it, because every modern computer is USB-C now, it's nice to just be able to plug a USB-C cable in and not have to worry about an adapter. So bonus points to iConnectivity for that. But you'll notice there's two different ports here. So what's really cool is you can connect up to two different um, devices to this. So one could be an iPhone or Android device. One could be a tablet. One could be a computer. Uh, both could be a computer. One could be a computer. One could be a, a, a iPad, whatever it is, whatever you want. Uh, I can connect two devices. I can pass MIDI between those. I can pass audio between those. Uh, there's modes to where I can set this up for streaming, uh, to where I can create monitor mixes out of the back. And you pair that with Oracle, which is their very, very powerful but simple control software. And this interface does a, a lot of different things. So, like, I'll scroll in here. You could see record, play USB 1, play USB 2, stream. You can use this just as a dead simple uh, interface for live performance, or you can use it to record, or you can use it to stream by making it really easy to receive audio from your computer and pass it back out to whatever your output is to your computer for streaming. It's a great, great interface. That's why it's number two on the list. And finally, number one on the list, you could probably guess what it is by the giant stack of interfaces I have there. It's another iConnectivity uh, interface, but it's the iConnectivity Play Audio 12. 
This is, I think, the best audio interface uh, for live performance. First, we have 12 outputs, so you see 10 there. And then on the front, we have our headphone output for 11 and 12. So uh, 10 outputs on the back, two on the front is more than enough for what we need. We have that USB host port, which again is super powerful, connect up to eight USB uh, MIDI controllers uh, to that, to pass MIDI to it. We have two USB ports. Now, these are not USB-C, that's one downside to me the play audio 12 that it's not USB C. Um, another downside is obviously that it doesn't have audio inputs but it makes up for it and some really cool features uh, let's go to the back here I'll show you it has an Ethernet port this gives you four RTP MIDI sessions um, to and from uh, the play audio 12 so what that means is I can connect the play audio 12 up to four different computers that will pass MIDI discreetly over an Ethernet cable uh, which is very very cool if you've got an iPad with touch OSC and you get the adapter to convert from lightning or USB-C into uh, Ethernet, then you could run Touch OSC on your iPad uh, over Ethernet into your Play Audio 12, and that's going to pass MIDI discreetly back uh, uh, to and from the device. And I could do that up to three other devices, which is cool. So RTP MIDI is killer on this, uh, this interface. But the biggest and killer feature here, if you look at the front, you see it says Scene A, Scene B. We have these two inputs here. Uh, and we have this control in and out. What the Play Audio 12 is in disguise is it's actually two interfaces because we have an interface for one computer and interface for the other computer. And we could create a fully redundant setup and system. And so it can be fully automatically redundant to where if computer A goes down, computer B automatically pops up. iConnectivity makes a great plugin called LifeSign to make that happen. Um, or if you're like me and you're a control freak and you like to be in control, then you can plug in a, um, um, a boss uh, foot controller into the input or anything that, uh, will, that it will accept as a foot controller into the input here and press the pedal and switch from A to B. That's how I prefer to do it in a manual switching setup. But this is a fully redundant audio, and here's the key, MIDI also. So if I'm sending MIDI out of here using that RTP port, I'm sending it to ProPresenter, I'm sending it to Resolume, um, then with when computer A switches down, so there's our Ethernet port there, when computer A switches uh, and goes down, computer B picks up, it's going to start sending MIDI from computer B. It's not going to send it both times. It's going to start sending MIDI at computer B. Um, audio is going to automatically switch. MIDI is going to automatically switch. And again, what's killer about this, you get all of this for $5.99. So that's where when I looked at some of the interfaces and felt like, oh, it's good, but it's not that great of a value. I'm basically getting two audio interfaces for $5.99, uh, MIDI redundancy, audio redundancy, 12 outputs, uh, USB MIDI eight, using eight different controllers. Again, my biggest argument against the Play Audio 12 uh, is it's not USB-C. I wish I had some mic inputs, maybe. Actually, I don't wish I had mic inputs because I never use it live, but that's maybe a downside for you is this would be your live performance interface and you have something else in the studio. But if you're going to be serious about tracks on stage, you need redundancy and the Play Audio 12 is the best interface to make that happen. So that's a look at the top five best interfaces for live performance in 2022. Again, if you want to get my suggestions on everything and the best type of gear to use on stage, then head to from studio to stage.com slash gear. Download my gear guide. It's completely free. Uh, it's updated for this year and you can see all my suggestions on what I think the best gear for live performance is thanks so much for watching everybody we'll see you next week take care bye